The Eli Manning Hall of Fame debate is one of the most heated and contentious debates in sports. It gets at the heart of a long-standing issue in sport debates. How much should rings weigh when judging individuals in a team sport? Eli supporters say he deserves to be in for putting up lots of counting stats and his two Super Bowl runs in 2007 and 2011, while his detractors believe Eli was nothing more than an average QB who played a long time and lucked into two rings off the back of his defense. But what is actually the case? This video takes an in-depth look at Eli Manning's Hall of Fame credibility. Enjoy. Eli was picked first overall in the 2004 NFL Draft by the San Diego Chargers, but he threw a hissy fit and refused to play for them, so he was traded to the New York Giants. His rookie season began with him sitting on the bench behind future Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner for nine games. Warner was then controversially benched for the highly touted rookie with the team sporting a 5-4 record. Eli's rookie season was a disaster, as he went just 1-2 six, completed under 50% of his throws, had a six touchdown to nine interception ratio, and a putrid 55.4 passer rating. There were a couple close losses along the way, such as a 14-10 loss to Atlanta in Eli's first career start, which saw New York fail to score a tying touchdown on three second-half drives, a 33-30 loss to Pittsburgh, which saw New York's defense give up a touchdown with five minutes left before Eli threw a game-ending interception, a 23-22 loss to Cincinnati, which saw the New York defense give up a game-winning touchdown with 52 seconds left. Eli would secure his first career win in the last week of the season versus Dallas, which saw the Giants score a game-winning touchdown with 11 seconds left. 2005 saw Eli and the Giants improve noticeably. New York finished with an 11-5 record, and Eli had a boost in his stats across the board. Although his numbers still weren't anything special, and improving on his dreadful rookie season was a low bar to clear. The team finished 10th in points per drive and 11th in points allowed per drive, as Eli threw for almost 3,800 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 17 interceptions for a 75.9 rating. There were some memorable losses, such as a 24-21 overtime loss to Seattle, where kicker Jay Feely missed three game-winning field goal attempts in the fourth quarter in overtime, another 24-21 loss to Minnesota, where Eli threw four interceptions, and the Vikings' offense had scored zero points until the final 10 seconds with the game-winning field goal. But there were also good moments, such as Eli leading a 13-point fourth quarter comeback versus Denver. Denver in a 24-23 win, and beating Philly on the road in overtime 26-23 despite Eli throwing three interceptions in the fourth quarter and overtime combined. The team won the NFC East and hosted the Carolina Panthers in the wildcard round. Eli's playoff debut was horrific. He threw zero touchdowns, three interceptions for a 35 passer rating while also taking four sacks. The Giants got destroyed 23 to nothing, and it could have been even worse if not for the defense forcing Carolina into several field goals in the red zone. The Giants offense never even got closer to the end zone than the Carolina 39-yard line all game long. Truly a disgusting and horrific effort. 2006 was a step back for both Eli and the Giants. Eli had moments of brilliance, such as a 30-24 overtime win versus Philadelphia, which saw him lead a 17-point fourth quarter comeback. Those moments were few and far between, as there were still too many games where he simply wasn't effective at all. The team also had a disastrous loss to Tennessee, where they blew a 21-point fourth quarter lead to lose 24-21. Eli finished the season with similar counting stats to 2005, although a closer look reveals a noticeable step back in terms of efficiency. Despite Eli's regression and the team finishing just 8-8 eight eight after a 6-2 start, the Giants made the playoffs, where they would face the division rival Philadelphia Eagles in the wildcard round. Unlike the year before against Carolina, the Giants and Eli made the game competitive. There were missed opportunities early on in the first quarter by New York, as they had two drives begin on Philadelphia's side of the field, but both ended in punts. These missed chances didn't affect them too much, as it was still a tie game late in the first half. Philly would extend the lead to 2010 entering the fourth, where Eli would show some glimpses of playoff runs to come. Leading New York to 10 straight fourth quarter points, capped off with a game-tying 80-yard touchdown drive, which saw him convert three third downs, including getting out of a second and 30. Eli would never touch the ball again after that touchdown drive, though, as Eagles backup quarterback Jeff Garcia led the team on a game-winning field goal drive that took up the remaining 504 of game time and resulted in a 23-20 Eagles win. 
The 2007 Giants were nothing special, at least during the regular season. The team was a respectable 10-6 with middling efficiency on both offense and defense. For his part, Eli Manning had a shitty season, putting up 23 touchdowns to 20 interceptions and a 73.9 passer rating. Interestingly enough, in the first and last games of the season, Eli combined for 8 touchdowns and an excellent 116.4 passer rating, but the Giants lost both of those games to Dallas and New England. In the 14 games in between, Eli put up truly terrible numbers, 15 touchdowns, 18 interceptions, and a 67.1 rating, but New York went 10-4 and in those games. People were, rightfully, getting close to writing off Eli as a bust, as the former first overall pick had been one of the worst quarterbacks in the league over the previous four seasons. But then the 2007 playoffs began. New York began their Super Bowl quest on the road against Tampa Bay in the wildcard round. New York started out slowly, going 3 and out on their first three drives, falling behind 7-0 after the first quarter, but then the flip switched, as New York scored 24 unanswered points, capped off by an almost 9-minute long, 92-yard touchdown drive in the fourth quarter to put the game away. New York ended up winning 24-14, and Eli was a crisp 20-for-27 20 for 185 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, and a 117.1 rating. Despite the win, the team was moving on to face the 13-3 division rival Cowboys on the road, and many thought the ride was over. They would be wrong, as New York would overcome a few early 90-yard touchdown drives by Dallas to take control of the game with a 37-yard touchdown drive early in the fourth quarter, capped off with a Brandon Jacobs touchdown run. Eli only threw 18 times, but he made them count, as he averaged over 9 yards per attempt, 2 touchdowns, while once again throwing no interceptions for a sparkling 132.4 passer rating. New York sealed the 21-17 win with an interception of Tony Romo in the end zone with 9 seconds left. New York would move on to play Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, where they once again fell behind early, losing 10-6 at halftime. However, New York would score touchdowns on both of their third quarter drives to take a 2017 lead heading into the fourth. The fourth was contentious. Green Bay would tie the game at 20 with a field goal, but New York kicker Lawrence Tynes missed both a go-ahead 43-yard field goal attempt and a 36-yard game-winning field goal attempt to send the game into overtime. In overtime, Dick Pick sender Brett Favre threw a ghastly interception to set New York up with great field position, which they capitalized off of to kick the game-winning 47-yard field goal to secure the 23-20 win to go to Super Bowl 42. In Super Bowl 42, New York would face the 18-0 New England Patriots. New York started the game off with a 10-minute field goal drive to go up 3-0, but New England answered with a 5-minute touchdown drive of their own to go up 7-3. And that was it for all the scoring over the first three quarters, setting up for a legendary final stanza. New York started the fourth with an 80-yard touchdown drive, capped off with Eli throwing a touchdown to David Tyree, more on him later, to go up 10-7. The two teams then exchanged punts before Tom Brady heroically dinked and dunked his way 80 yards downfield to take a 14-10 lead on a 6-yard touchdown pass to Randy Moss. The cornerback fell down, of course, with 2.45 left. Then came what is arguably the most famous drive in NFL history. People remember Super Bowl 42 for the infamous 32-yard helmet catch by David Tyree on third down with a minute 15 left, but they probably don't remember the Giants converting a 4th and 1 with Brandon Jacobs earlier in the drive, or Eli converting a 3rd and 11 throw to Steve Smith, the other one, for 12 yards before finding Plexico Burris for the game-winning 13 yard touchdown with 39 seconds left to go up 17 to 14. New England would go four and out to end the game and cement one of the biggest upsets in sports history. Eli's stats weren't anything special, 19 to 34 for 255 yards, two touchdowns and an interception for an 87.3 rating, and the Tyree helmet catch was obviously lucky. But he made other plays and avoided the costly turnover that would have doomed the Giants. Shout out to Asante Samuel. He won Super Bowl MVP, although I would have voted for Justin Tuck, who terrorized Tom Brady with two sacks and a forced fumble. It was great to see a team not bail out Tom Brady for a change when Brady played like dog shit in a playoff game. Riding high off of the Super Bowl title the year before, the 2008 Giants started off 11-1 and Eli had taken a massive leap in his efficiency. He still wasn't putting up elite numbers, but he threw just 10 interceptions and posted a respectable 86.4 rating. He wasn't asked to throw a ton either, as the Giants had two 1,000-yard rushers. All was fine and dandy until star wide receiver Plexico Burris literally shot himself in the fucking leg. The team would end up losing three of its last five games after the incident, but still finish with a very good 12-4 record in first round bye. Their playoff game would be against the Philadelphia Eagles, and much like Eli's first career home playoff game versus Carolina in 2005, the results were disastrous. New York lost 23-11, Eli averaged just 5.8 yards per attempt, threw no touchdowns, had two interceptions for a vomit-inducing 40.7 passer rating. It didn't help that New York 
Sheriff kicker John Carney missed both 46 and 47 yard field goals, but New York's offense wasn't able to capitalize with touchdowns on two other drives that started inside the Philadelphia 35 yard line or score any points in the fourth quarter, twice turning it over on downs, then throwing an interception before fumbling on their last drive. Despite New York's ineptitude offensively, this was still a single digit game midway through the fourth quarter. Eli just couldn't get it done. People talk about playoff Eli like he was a demigod, but he had multiple playoff flameouts like this. A common theme throughout Eli's time in New York was the team starting seasons off great before collapsing down the stretch, and 2009 is a great example of this. Eli had one of the best seasons of his career, throwing 27 touchdowns to 14 interceptions for a 93.1 rating, but as alluded to before, his play and the team's performance fell off dramatically after the first five games. New York started off 5-0 with Eli averaging almost 9 yards per attempt, 10 touchdowns to 2 interceptions, and a 111 point seven rating. But over the last 11 games, New York went just 3-8 and eight with Eli throwing 17 touchdowns to 12 interceptions for an 86.4 rating. There were some losses where Eli did his part, such as a 21-20 loss to San Diego where the New York defense gave up a game-winning touchdown with 21 seconds left, and a 45-38 loss to Philly where he threw for 391 yards and 3 touchdowns for 130.5 rating. But that's about where the positives end. He had a 61 passer rating and a 21-point loss to New Orleans, threw 3 interceptions and had a 47.5 rating in a loss to Arizona, a 55.7 rating in a 23-point loss to Philadelphia, a 65.6 rating in a 20-point loss to Denver, before ending the season with a brutal 32-point loss to Carolina, and a 37-point loss to Minnesota, where he threw a combined one touchdown and three interceptions. Inconsistency still defined Eli's career. Much like 2009, 2010 saw highs and lows for both Eli and the Giants. The good? The team won 10 games. Eli threw for over 4,000 yards and had 31 touchdown passes. The bad? The team missed the playoffs and Eli led the NFL with 25 interceptions. New York once again started the season off great, going 6-2 and two and even 9-4 and four at one point before one crucial loss would destroy their playoff chances. In what is now known as the Miracle in Meadowlands 2, New York had a 31-10 lead with 8 minutes left, but the Eagles would explode for 28 unanswered points in the last 8 minutes, capped off with a legendary Deshaun Jackson punt return as time expired. A win would have most likely won New York the NFC East, and they still still had time to make up for it, but a 45-17 thrashing in Green Bay the following week, which saw Eli throw four interceptions, all but ended New York's playoff hopes. New York would win at Washington in the final week to finish 10-6, but would miss the playoffs due to a win percentage and common games tiebreaker with the fellow 10-6 Eagles and 10-6 Packers. It was now three years and zero playoff wins since the Miracle Super Bowl run in 2007, and Giants fans were growing impatient. 2011 would end up being the best season of Eli's career, and the biggest arc argument for his Hall of Fame case. But there was a time when it looked like it was going to be another disappointing season following a hot start. Once again, New York started 6-2. Eli was rolling, putting up a 98.8 rating and averaging 8.5 yards per attempt. They had just knocked off the Patriots on the road after Eli once again outdueled Tom Brady in the fourth quarter, but the team then dropped four in a row to fall to 6-6. Six six. The season was on the brink, and it looked lost the next week in Dallas with the team down 12 with 5.41 left. Then, Eli exploded, leading an 80 and 58 yard touchdown drive back to back to take a 37 34 lead with 46 seconds left. The game would end with Dallas missing a field goal. New York would suffer an embarrassing loss to the Rex Grossman led Washington at home to fall to 7 7 the next week. Eli threw three interceptions and had a dreadful 45.5 passer rating before closing out the season with two straight comfortable wins over the New York Jets and Dallas to win the NFC East and secure a playoff spot. In what would end up being the only home playoff win of his career, Eli shredded the hapless Atlanta Falcons defense in the wild card round to the tune of 277 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions for a 129.2 rating. New York won 24-2. That's right, folks. Atlanta scored the same amount of points as a mid-range jump shot. The Atlanta offense, which ranked seven that season, was completely shut out by New York's rejuvenated defense. Eli and the Giants would take their act to Green Bay next, where they had to face the 15-1 defending Super Bowl champs, led by NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers. The teams were at a 10-10 stalemate for most of the second quarter. New York had a blocked 40-yard field goal. Green Bay suffered drops. Eli threw an interception. Green Bay fullback John Kuhn then fumbled in Green Bay territory, which set up New York with a field goal to go up 13-10 with 156 left in the half. Green Bay would punt, and New York got the ball back at their own 31 with 41 seconds left. Everybody thought they would just go into halftime with the three-point lead, but Ahmad Bradshaw broke off a 23-yard run to get down to the Green Bay 37. Then, the turning point came. Eli 
would throw a 37-yard touchdown to Akeem Nix as time expired to go up 20-10 to at the half. Green Bay would add a field goal in the third quarter to make it 20-13 to in New York heading into the fourth, but Green Bay would see a drive stall out at the New York 39-yard line. New York added a field goal to go up 10. Green Bay running back Ryan Grant then fumbled, which was returned to Green Bay's four-yard line. Then Eli threw a touchdown to Mario Manningham to go up 30-13 to with 6.53 left. Green Bay would answer back with a Rodgers touchdown pass to make it 30-20 with 4.52 left, but New York scored another touchdown with 2.44 left to go up 37-20 to to seal the win. Eli was once again great, throwing for 330 yards and three touchdowns for a 114.5 rating. Following the monumental upset over Green Bay, New York traveled to San Francisco to play the 13-3 49ers. Led by the number one ranked defense, littered with all pros like Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, and Justin Smith, San Francisco struck first off of a 73-yard touchdown pass from Alex Smith to Vernon Davis, but New York would claw its way back to take a 10-7 halftime lead. San Fran would score off of another Alex Smith to Davis touchdown to take a 14-10 lead midway through the third, but that's when San Francisco's special teams would come in to save the day for New York. San Francisco punt returner Kyle Williams botched a punt return which set New York up at the San Francisco 29-yard line. New York would then score a touchdown off of it to go up 17-14. San Francisco answered right back with a field goal to tie it at 17, although they missed a golden chance to take the lead after having second and five at the New York 10-yard line. The teams would trade punts throughout the rest of regulation to send the game into overtime, where the teams continued to be in a stalemate, until Kyle Williams botched another punt, this time setting up New York at the San Francisco 24-yard line, which they capitalized on for an easy 31-yard game-winning field goal to win 20-17 and advance to Super Bowl 46. Quite simply, much like overtime in the 2007 NFC Championship game versus Green Bay, Eli lucked out big time in terms of field position. The Giants scored just 10 points on their last 12 possessions, all 10 points coming off of drives starting inside the San Francisco 29-yard line. Take out those two possessions and New York scored just 10 points on 15 drives all game long. Eli was great in the first two playoff games of 2011, but extremely lucky in this one. New York's Super Bowl foe would once again be New England. New York had a 9-0 lead in the first quarter following an intentional grounding safety on Tom Brady and an Eli touchdown pass to Victor Cruz. The next two quarters would more or less be all New England as they scored 17 straight including a killer touchdown throw from Brady to Aaron Hernandez to take a 17-9 lead. New York would close out the third with back-to-back -back field goal drives to make it 17-15 New England heading into the final quarter. The fourth started off with a brutal Tom Brady interception on a pass thrown over five yards to New York linebacker Chase Blackburn, but New York failed to capitalize on it. New England got the ball back again up 17-15, but a wide open Wes Welker famously dropped a shitty throw by Brady on second down with 4.06 left. Another Brady incompletion forced a New England punt, giving the ball back to Eli at the New York 12-yard line with 3.46 left. Eli would once again pull some of his magic, including a gorgeous 38-yard throw to Mario Manningham to open the drive. Eli would complete another 16-yard first down throw to Manningham and a 14-yard first down throw to Akeem Nix. New York had first down at New England's 7-yard line with 109 left. New England then decided to famously let Ahmad Bradshaw score the touchdown to get the ball back, which they did after stopping New York's two-point conversion. Down 21-17 with 57 seconds left, Tom Brady converted a 4th and 16 and eventually got the ball to midfield where he threw up an incomplete Hail Mary as time expired. Eli and the Giants had somehow done it again, upsetting the mighty Patriots in the Super Bowl for the second time in four seasons. Eli won his second Super Bowl MVP after going 30 for 40 for 296 yards and one touchdown for a 103.7 passer rating. Eli played 20 games total in 2011, throwing for 6,152 yards, 38 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, a 95.1 rating, seven fourth quarter comebacks, and eight game winning drives. In the fourth quarter alone, he threw 18 touchdowns, six interceptions, and averaged nine yards per attempt for a 111 rating. But most importantly, he made Tom Brady eat shit once again, and he'll always have my respect for that. Although Eli certainly wasn't carried to a ring, it's worth noting how incredible his defense was in those four games. Atlanta, Green Bay, San Francisco, and New England combined to play 71 games in 2011. In their 67 games not against New York in the playoffs, they averaged 29.2 points per game. In their four playoff games versus New York, they averaged just 14 points per game. Eli doesn't win without his defense becoming elite, which many Eli fans seem to overlook. Fresh off of his second Super Bowl in four years and only 31 years old, Eli Manning and the Giants looked poised for another great season in 2012. And much like pretty much every other season during his prime, the Giants got off to a blistering start, going 6-2 before slumping in the second half of the year to finish 9-7. That record was good enough to win the NFC East and earn a playoff spot in 2011, but not in 2012.
2012 as the team missed the playoffs. The 2012 Giants truly were a Jekyll and Hyde team. They had several dominating wins such as a 35 point win versus Philadelphia, 29 point win versus Carolina, 28 point win versus Green Bay, 25 point win versus New Orleans, and a 23 point win versus San Francisco, but also puzzling blowout losses such as an 18 point loss to Cincinnati, a 19 point loss to Baltimore, and a 34 point shutout loss to Atlanta. That's not to say there weren't close losses as well because there were. A 1917 loss to Philadelphia where Philadelphia kicked the game winning field goal with 149 left before New York missed a 54 yard field goal as time expired. A crushing 24-20 home loss to Pittsburgh which saw New York blow a 10 point fourth quarter lead and the offense punt on all three of their fourth quarter possessions. And a 17-16 road loss to Washington which saw rookie of the year Robert Griffin III throw a game winning touchdown early in the fourth. New York got the ball two more times but punted both times. Eli's final stat line on the season of 3,948 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions with an 87.2 rating was merely solid, not great, and a noticeable step down from his 2011 season. 2013 would be the worst season of Eli's career besides his abbreviated rookie year. He threw 18 touchdowns to an astounding 27 interceptions, which was the third time he led the NFL in that category, for a terrible 69.4 rating. New York finished 30th in points per drive, and for the first time, the team finished with a losing record with Eli, going 7-9. Unlike previous years where New York would start hot and fade away, the 2013 Giants started 0-6 with Eli throwing 15 interceptions. The team would win 5 of the next 6 with Eli throwing just 3 interceptions to get to 5-7, and seven, but Eli would relapse, throwing 9 interceptions in the last 4 games to finish 7-9. Besides 2 losses to Dallas, the first of which saw Eli throw a pick 6 while trailing 29-24 with a minute 50 left, and a 24-21 loss which saw Eli tied the game at 21 before Dallas kicked the game-winning field goal, New York had no close losses. Eli had five games with three-plus interceptions, two games with four-plus interceptions, and a zero-touchdown, five-interception gem versus Seattle. Just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. 2014 saw Eli have one of the best statistical seasons of his career, but also the worst record of his career as a full-time starter to that point. He had 4,400 yards and 30 touchdown passes for a 92.1 rating, thanks partly due to the addition of superstar rookie wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., but the Giants finished just 6-10. The team started off a solid 3-2 before losing 7 straight to fall to 3-9. The low point was a 16-10 home loss to San Francisco where Eli threw 5 interceptions, including one on the San Francisco 4-yard line down 6 in the 4th quarter. That loss was followed by a 31-28 loss to Dallas where New York gave up the game-winning touchdown with a minute 1 left. That was then followed by a loss to lowly Jacksonville where the team blew a 21-0 lead, including giving up two defensive scores in the second half and a game-winning field goal with 28 seconds left. As was the story almost every year of his career, there were several weeks where Eli looked like a top-five quarterback in the league and then several where he would look like he didn't belong in the NFL. The story of the 2015 New York Giants would be blown leads as they once again finished 6-10 and despite Eli having another very good year statistically, throwing for 4,400 yards and a career-high 35 touchdowns for a 93.6 rating. In week one versus Dallas, New York had a 26-20 lead with a minute 37 left, but gave up a 72-yard touchdown drive, including the game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds left to lose 27-26. Week two versus Atlanta, New York had a 20-10 lead entering the fourth and two drives up 20-17, but punted both times before Atlanta scored a game-winning touchdown with 120 left before a failed final drive by New York that stalled out at midfield to lose 24-20. New York won four of their next five games games to be 4-3 and three, heading into a memorable matchup with New Orleans. There was no defense played all day as the teams combined for 101 points. Eli and Drew Brees combined for 13 touchdown passes. Eli threw 6 of them, but it wasn't enough as the team blew a 49-42 fourth quarter lead to lose 52-49 as New Orleans kicked the game winning field goal as time expired. New York won the next week to sit at 5-4 and four and hosting their old friends the Patriots. It appeared as if Eli would do it again to New England as he led an 86-yard field goal drive to go up 26-24 with 150 left, although the team failed to score a touchdown from first and goal from the New England 5-yard line. In what would be the turning point of the season, rookie safety Landon Collins dropped a brutal game ceiling interception from Tom Brady. Shocker. New England would go on to kick a 54-yard game-winning field goal as time expired to win 27-26. Eli threw three interceptions the next week in a 20-14 loss to Washington. Then New York blew a 10-point fourth quarter lead 
lead to the other New York team, which included Eli throwing an interception on the Jets' four-yard line with a 10-point lead with 8.50 left. The Giants' defense gave up the game-tying touchdown with 32 seconds left. The game went into overtime where the Jets kicked a field goal to go up 23-20 before the game ended when Giants kicker and infamous women respecter Josh Brown missed a 48-yard field goal. Eli would have the best statistical game of his career the next week in a 31-24 Monday Night Football win over Miami. There was the infamous OBJ Josh Norman game versus Carolina, which saw New York fall behind 35-7 before Eli led a furious second-half rally to tie the game at 35 with 146 left before Carolina kicked the game-winning field goal as time expired. New York then lost the last two games of the year, a 32-point blowout loss to Minnesota and a 35-30 loss to Philadelphia. The 2016 Giants under first-year head coach Ben McAdee had a successful season by all accounts, going 11-5 to make the playoffs on the back of the first-ranked defense in the league. That doesn't mean Eli was good, though, as the Giants' offense was one of the worst in the NFL, finishing 29th in points per drive and not scoring over 28 points in any game. Eli did throw for over 4,000 yards and 26 touchdowns, but also 16 interceptions and averaged just 6.7 yards per attempt for an 86 passer rating. He did have six game-winning drives, six games which New York combined to win by just 25 points. A 20-19 win versus Dallas in Week 1, a 16-13 win versus New Orleans in Week 2, a 27-23 win versus Baltimore in Week 6, a 17-10 win versus the LA Rams in Week 7, a 21-20 win versus Cincinnati in Week 9, and a 19-10 win versus Washington in Week 17. But as you can tell, those were all low-scoring games where Eli had big margin for error due to his elite defense. The Giants entered the playoffs facing Green Bay on the road once again. This would be the third time Eli played a playoff game at Lambeau Field. Unfortunately for Eli, there would be no upset this time, as the Packers overcame a slow start to win comfortably 38-13. The game was infamous for New York wide receivers, including Odell Beckham Jr., going on a boat trip during the week. OBJ didn't play well, suffering several drops that could have made it a much closer game. A 41-yard touchdown pass by Eli made it 14-13 Packers midway through the third, but Aaron Rodgers would take over from then on, throwing two touchdowns and leading Green Bay to 24 straight points. Eli played better than his stats would indicate due to several drops by New York's wide receivers, but overall he still went out rather quietly in what would be the final playoff game of his career. The 2016 Giants' anemic offense was covered up by the best defense in the NFL to give a severely flawed team a much better record than it deserved. The 2017 Giants wouldn't be so lucky, as the Eli-led offense remained horrid, finishing dead last in points per drive, while the defense slipped all the way from 1st to 24th. The results, as you could probably guess, were disastrous, as the team finished with a 3-13 record. Perhaps the most memorable moment of the season was when Eli got benched in Week 13 for Geno Smith to end his consecutive start streak at 2-22. Despite losing 13 games, there weren't that many winnable games in the fourth quarter for New York. They blew a 7-point fourth quarter lead in a 27-24 loss to Philly, a 1-point fourth quarter lead in a 25-23 loss to Tampa, a 5-point fourth quarter lead in a 27-22 loss to the Chargers, and a 34-29 loss to Philadelphia where New York had a 48-yard field goal blocked down two in the fourth quarter and a potential game-winning drive stall out at the Philadelphia 11. Eli was going into his age 37 season and his play over the previous two seasons had gone from inconsistent to just downright bad. The hope going into 2018 for New York was that the selection of phenom running back Saquon Barkley in the draft and the return of a healthy Odell Beckham Jr. at wide receiver would help Eli return to his championship form. In theory, this sounded great, but on the field, it saw negligible improvement. The team didn't go 3-13 again, but it did go 5-11. And, and while the offense was no longer dreadful, it was still just 18th in points per drive, while the defense was 24th in points allowed per drive. Eli, at this point, was like a neutered dog. He was hesitant to throw downfield and relied mostly on checkdowns. This made his completion percentage and INT totals look nice, but it didn't lead to effective play. Incredibly, New York still had several games that were extremely winnable. Week 1 versus Jacksonville, they had two fourth quarter drives down by five, but failed to score any points. Week 5 at Carolina, Eli threw a go-ahead touchdown to Saquon to take a 31-30 lead with 108 left, but Carolina kicked a game-winning 63-yard field goal to win 33-31. Week 12 versus Philly, New York tied the game at 22 with 549 left, but Philly kicked a game-winning field goal with 43 seconds left to win 25-22. Week 16 versus Indianapolis, New York had a 27-21 fourth quarter lead and the ball, but punted, then gave up a game-winning touchdown with 
29 seconds left. New York's final drive stalled out with an Eli interception to lose 28-27. Finally, in Week 17 versus Dallas, New York kicked a field goal to go up 35-28 with 2.35 left, but Dallas scored a touchdown and converted a two-point conversion to go up 36-35 with 1.12 left. New York would get the ball back, but would turn it over on downs without gaining a yard to close out the season. Following back-to-back -back disastrous seasons, the New York front office finally decided to look for a successor to Eli by drafting Duke quarterback slash Norman Bates doppelganger Daniel Jones with a sixth overall pick in 2019. Eli started the first two games, both losses, before the plug was pulled and he was replaced by Jones. He would return for two more starts towards the end of the year when Jones got hurt, his final start being a 36-20 home win versus Miami where he fittingly threw three interceptions. The Giants finished 4-12 and and Eli announced his retirement in late January 2020. So the question remains, is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? His supporters say because he has two rings, two Super Bowl MVPs, and finished top 10 all-time in major stat categories like completions, yards, and touchdowns, that he should be a shoe-in. I don't see it that way, and I believe that's overlooking way too much and ignoring loads of necessary context. Much like his draft mate Philip Rivers, Eli's large counting stats are a result of being durable in the most QB-friendly era in NFL history, which isn't a negative by any means, but it doesn't mean he's great either. Eli had far too many any average to below average seasons to warrant being a Hall of Fame quarterback. Even in his best season, which was 2011, he was only a borderline top five quarterback, and he never came close to that in any other season. The stats bear this out too. He never came close to getting any MVP consideration. He was maddeningly inconsistent, capable of looking like an elite quarterback for four to five weeks, then throwing up several stinkers that the best quarterbacks just don't have. Every conceivable measure out there paints Eli as an average QB who was capable of elite play for short stretches, but couldn't maintain it for very long. Eli never won a playoff game in any year besides 2007 and 2011. He never won a playoff game when his opponent scored more than 20 points. He has a career 500 record in the regular season. He made the playoffs just twice in his last 10 seasons as a starter, and just once in his last 7 seasons as a starter. He won a respectable 59% of his starts from 2004 to 2012, but just 39% of his starts from 2013 to 2019. Even in the playoffs, his inconsistency shows if you look hard enough. In 2007 and 2011, he threw 15 touchdowns and two interceptions for a great 100.1 passer rating. But in his other four playoff appearances, his team went 0-4 and, and he had just three touchdowns and seven interceptions for a disgusting 57.2 rating. His defense in his two title runs allowed just 15.1 points per game, never giving up over 20 points in any game, mostly against elite offenses. Combine the defense with with some special teams luck like Kyle Williams fumbling twice in the 2011 NFC Championship game, and it's not surprising Eli was able to make and win two Super Bowls. Eli deserves credit for not shitting his pants in the fourth quarter of both Super Bowls against New England, but again, if the New York defense hadn't kept the score down for him in the first place, his late game heroics would have been rendered moot. I believe Eli will get into the Hall of Fame eventually due to people's fascination with rings, but he would never get my vote.